because we haven't reached that level yet. Well, no, I mean, look. Uh, we can. We're happy. To, we're givers. We're I'm, givers. I'm an optimist. I'm an optimist. Always thinking the best of people. I believe on everyone. Brian, we'll have you know in that spirit, I was making show notes in a Google Doc to be shared at some point with links. <laughs> well, if only we could release those. By the way, I really enjoyed all of your notes in the uh, the Weird Things uh, newsletter this week. <laughs> Uh, let's see. We should be live right now, and I I don't know. I I've I've forgotten the ability to take us live on Di on Diamond Club. Are you able to to do that? I wouldn't know how. Damn it! I'm gonna have to look all that crap up. Oh, so snap! So what the weird things new? I got to figure out how to get that out to the people's. I guess I got to go Patreon, pull all the names from there, so I can send them the the updates. Okay. Uh, hold on. Can someone? Take us live on DCTV, question mark. I've forgotten how. You know what they say is they say you should identify the one part of the operation to which you are absolutely essential and delegate everything else. That's what they say. Um, I think that's a lovely idea, and I look forward to being able to implement it at some point. <laughs> but until can I, then... Can I tell you the secret of success in business and everything that I've sure. come to believe? Yeah. The, the best businessmen in the world are the best recruiters. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Um, uh, what, what's the story? This might be an Edison story or a uh, Ford story, but the story is at some point, you know, business mogul gets taken and put on the stand. Ford. Uh, yes. Uh, and, and, and he's just like, yeah, ask me anything. I don't care. And, and they're like, well, what's, uh, you, know, you, know, you know, I'm smarter than everyone. And he's like, basically, his, his case was, I have a guy for everything. It's like, whatever you want to know. You want you, yeah, you want to know? They're grilling him on the stand or something about it, about like, well, do you know this? No, I don't. Do you know this? I don't know. Well, how do you run a company? He says, there's a button on my desk. I press this button. Somebody will come give me the answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course. I mean, this is the amazing thing is that we're all kind of in that position now, thanks to Google. We all have, we're all Fords, uh, or at least have the potential to be, you know, uh, roughly as effective as a Ford. Thanks to uh, to that. Let's uh, let's set levels real quick. I think I'm I'm looking good right now. Let me hear you. Uh, this is the level at which we'll be talking. My microphone is right here. Mm. Yep. This distance apart. Right on. Uh, two card length. Two Theory Eleven decks apart. Uh, are, are those Theory Eleven decks? What is that? No, these were the uh, the Millier's deck. Uh, oh, that's right. That's right. You showed uh, those to us earlier. By Millier's deck by. Logan, designed Menno. by Logan Max, Derek McKee is the one who uh, presents these. So, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, since nobody's responding to my Diamond Club thing, um, uh, Tanky, you deserve Diamond <laughs> Club enabling privileges. I'm just gonna send you my credentials. Um, uh, 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 this is how the White House got hacked. What's that? This is how the White House got <laughs> oh, hacked. <yeah. laughs> That's how the warlock got in? Yeah, or just originally, you know, the White House just got hacked. Uh, I, I didn't know that that was a, a new thing right now. Um, let me see. Um, Dan Dirks? Question mark? Dan Dirks. Dan Dirks. I'm such a jerk. I so I went to this. one of those uh, haunted houses last night where they put, like, the hood over your head. Oh Jesus! By the way, you know what's funny is uh, when when you're when you're a bit sore. Uh, you know how like when you work out really hard. Sore where, Brian? Uh, just all over. Uh, when one's sore, um, you know how like uh, after working out really hard, you watch someone else do an athletic thing, and you just think, ooh, like literally. The thought of going to a uh, haunted house and being manhandled in any way just made me go, ooh. <laughs> I I was disappointed. I'd heard good reviews, so I'm friends with you, know, Stuart of Stuart and Barry. Oh yeah, sure, sure, sure. So Stuart, Stuart texted me. Said, "Do you want to go? Do you want to go do this haunted house thing?" And it sounded really cool because, like, Wait, the full they, immersion are they, one. Are they, are they based in LA now? Stuart is. Okay, I did not know that. Yeah, uh, Barry's out of London, but uh, Stuart says, "Do you want to go?" I'm like, "Yeah, that's gonna be cool." So I go there and it, call a loan, and so you buy your tickets in advance, and then like, if you want, you can show up a day before at some other location. And I didn't do that because we just found out about yesterday. And then you go there, like the day of, they tell you where to show up. And it's in like bad, bad part of L.A. Oh, geez. <laughs> They're like, also bring lots of cash. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, the potential was there. But never for a moment did I feel I was anywhere more than just a few feet away from a, you know, a cheap fog machine and some actor getting paid to pretend. It was just. Man, I, I, th I, I think. Like you see, you seem like the type that could never be hypnotized. Where it's like, I want to give myself over to the illusion so bad. That I, it's I do. Like, no, I do too. But I like. I think that you. It's. I, 
I went to the Queen Mary, the Dark Harbor thing Thursday night, right? They right. take over this whole harbor there. They have like three different haunted houses going through the Queen Mary. And parts of that were really cool because at some point you're actually going through the engine room and you're, you're, there's spooky stuff. And there are parts of that that I thought were really kind of cool because it's just you have this old ship with production value. Hey, you go through uh, this. Real, real quick, are you Andrew underscore Main or Andrew Main? Because we, we're live now on Diamond Club. Andrew Main for what? Uh, Twitter. Oh, there you uh, go. Andrew Main. Okay, yeah. I don't know why. For some reason, TweetDeck wasn't picking that up. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to set a link if you want to also I, I, I guess that my, my complaint was just that it's like there are – things you can do to you you have to think through the experience a little bit more deeper and, and you know there's you go at one point you go to this kind of what feels like sort of this this like restaurant sort of environment and a girl sits down at the table and traces you can't see her face she's like out of the ring and she traces things in salt or whatever you know uh wow and that's kind of cool it's kind of cool but it's like okay you know now put a plate of something in front of me and make me eat it you know do do something because it started off pretty cool so, so what you're saying is if you have um once you go into an, a controlled environment like that, you have a tool set available that's not available to every other right. uh, haunted house out there. So it's like use the tools that you have uh, to give a fully immersive experience. Yeah, you start off doing something. I don't want to spoil what he wants to do it. The next thing you know, a hood's thrown over your head and you're pulled into another room and some guy's staring, you know, using a flashlight, looking at your eyes and your ears and giving this ch- you know, this check. It's kind of like a dharma slash cult kind of that was the initial conceit so does it feel like now and i know you don't play uh first person shooters a lot but what you're describing is like the introduction for uh you know like like half the you know for, for like bioshock infinite or uh or, or, or far cry or any number Resident of Resident evil it, it it starts but then the conceit they just it pr- pretty much ends up being what kind of how many different ideas can we throw out you without really following through the conceit which, ah, i got it got it which I'm thinking like, man, there are things they could do where, you know, put you in a room with five other people sitting there reciting something as they watch a video and you're not allowed to leave until you get into the group. I mean, there's so many ways to mess man, with you people. Could also, you could also set it up to where you tell people that um, uh, that real five real people are brought in at a time, but you have like two of them be ringers. Like at some point, yeah. one of them, you know, bites a blood capsule and starts freaking out and starts reciting, you know. Uh, you know, uh, Lovecraftian nonsense. Yeah, you could, yeah, could do things like two where, like, if you want to make it plausible, like, imagine if you're waiting to go into a room and you hear somebody say, if you do that again, you're fired. I will send you home. And okay. then you get put into the next room and some guy's just acting creepy and weird. It's like, well, fuck it. Pardon yeah, it, you know. Yeah, yeah, like, sure, sure, sure. Now we, we have an official. You know what? Here, yeah. let's go. Let's go ahead and start the actual show. I think. I okay. think we're 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 all weirded up right here. All right, all right. ready. Going live and recording in three, two. Oh, nope, nope, lied, lied. Ready, three, two. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Brian Brushwood. The one true co host that is, was, and ever shall be. As you know, the Weird Thing Podcast has always been two co hosts, Brian and Andrew, and will always be two co hosts. Yes. Just as it is, as we are. The number one podcast. <laughs> and have been since our launch in 1887. It's yes. in the Weird Things Dictionary. Hmm? In Airstrip One. <laughs> Airstrip One's number one podcast. Uh, uh, yeah, Justin Robert Young is out on assignment. Uh, the assignment being to fly home to, uh, to uh, California today. So it's just the two of us, which is good because things go in a weird direction. from Even from the Weird Things podcast when it's just us. And, and we can say what his prior assignment was too yes his other assignment was to sneakily run a 45 day long con in which he deceived his longtime girlfriend ashley paramore into believing that he didn't have an engagement ring in his hand when they uh hung out on on a brief vacation in seattle and then to surprise the hell out of her by showing that he actually did so there you go congratulations justin gotta get married congrats to justin yes Brian. What's up, buddy? Speaking of family. Yeah. I got one. I got uh I got three, and that's it. Hmm. <laughs> Talk about Jeff a weird Goldblum thing. Says nature will find a way. <laughs> <laughs> what about the lysine dependency? No. So, Brian, yes. I want you to imagine this is this is again, horrifically speaking. Um, I want you to imagine that uh one of your child has your children has a medical condition. Uh, we'll call it a 
I think it's called like thylacemia, something to that effect. They should produce it. Pick a child. Pick one of your children. I'll pick the youngest. Nope, nope, too creepy. Uh, oldest, oldest, oldest. Be Penny, Penny. Yeah, right. Penny, Penny. So imagine Penny has this condition where she produces too much blood. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> so she just gets like Michelin man, little Michelin man, little uncomfortable, she little swelling, whatever. Oh and my so, god! So you know, you, part of what you have to do is you have to, you have to bleed her from bleed time her, to time. You have to drain her. Little syringe, and maybe you can donate blood on a regular basis or something like that. Okay, and maybe you just get in the habit of like you just do it at home. What about leeches? Can I just throw some leeches on her and then pluck them yeah, off? You can do that, or you can just plug a blood bag into her, and it's like, oh, we'll, we'll bleed her here and then take it down to the blood bank. Right, right? First of all, this is a real condition. Yeah, that's that's a real condition. Okay. I, I think it's called thylacemia, something to that effect. Thylo, let me pull this up here. I'll get you too, the name too, of it. Too much blood. Polycythemia. Um, Polycythemia. Okay. Polycythemia. You produce too much blood, and I would too many imagine. Too blood cells, yeah. Uh, yeah I, I, man, I, okay. Extra blood aside, I would imagine that you would heal like really fast from things in general, because that's why, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, being a fire eater, I burn my mouth repeatedly, and I've noticed that those things heal astonishingly quicker. And I've always assumed that it's because of the increased blood flow in that area compared to like, you know, if you get a cut on your on your ankle or whatever, it takes longer to heal because the blood doesn't doesn't get over there. I would have I, I would having more blood make you heal faster. Do you think? I don't know. Remember your mouth, your like your mouth lining and all those are things that replace themselves quite frequently too. That's a good point. Okay, regardless. So, so, so my daughter. So I have to bleed my daughter. I would imagine that would be super horrifying at first. And I, to be honest, I think I would just get used to it because, like, you know, diabetics just get used to giving themselves shot shots. And like I mentioned, you know, uh, people ask about fire eating, like, ah, what happens when you burn yourself? I'm like, I burn myself all the time. You just get used to it. I would imagine that weirdly, that would become comfortable. And I guess it's perfectly good blood too, right? Because I think mm -hmm. I think Penny's O negative. So do you have it stockpiling in the refrigerator, let's say, and you know maybe you can you can drain it. What do you want to do with it? <laughs> Just remember that we're doing the weird things podcast. Uh, what are we gonna do with it? I mean, I would imagine we would go to, uh, you know, B uh, uh, Bonnie has what's called baby blood, which is O negative uh, minus a certain like uh, like antigen or pathogen or I forget what it is, but it's something that 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 like uh, <laughs> like. Uh, she has the type of blood that they could give directly to newborn babies, regardless mm. of, of the baby. Uh, and so she gets a lot of phone calls from the vampires over at the blood clinic saying, we need your blood. And uh, I would imagine that, 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 that it would just be a regular thing. Like, I wouldn't do it. We would just go, you know, it's our weekly trip to the blood bank. Okay, so you do that. But let's say you, you one, let's say before you do the podcast, you've got a bleed penny, all right? All right. Okay, uh, sure. Uh, I, I could do that. Uh, that would be... Say you forgot to go to the blood bank a couple times. Oh, no. So so they're just sitting around. Yeah. So I've, Okay, so what you're saying is, for a perfectly legitimate reason, <laughs> uh, I ha I'm sitting on, what, like a half gallon of blood? Maybe. Maybe half a gallon of blood. Oh, jeez. What, what do I do with it? Now, now at this point, I'm going to assume that it's not like you could just show up to the blood bank with, with, with a bunch of bags and say, hey, you guys want these? <laughs> They might have a little issue with that. <laughs> um, so, so what do you do with it? I, I... All right, Brian, come to my come to Doctor Andrew's office. Okay, uh, knock, knock, knock. Uh, sup, Doctor A? Uh, hey. I I got this blood here. Uh, what what's this good for? Brian, I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Me? No, I, I look. I'm just a guy bleeding his ten year old daughter. I don't understand what's. I'm the your doctor, Brian. I, your uh, doctor. Oh, uh, Brian, I'm looking at your test here, and I noticed something. Yeah. There's a chance that you're going to get early onset Alzheimer's. You might be missing some muscle mass. Ooh, that's that's not good. I don't I don't I don't, I don't want to do that. I, no, I, uh, no. Is is there is there a cure? Uh, Brian, there's not really a cure. I mean, there's experimental procedures, but nothing I can recommend. And nothing to be practical. Um, well, okay. When you say nothing that would be practical, I assume you mean like you know nothing. Uh, nothing filtered through our government-run FDA, but it's, well, look, I see a glimmer in your eye, Dr. Andrew. I feel like I, there's something... I don't know anything about your situation. I mean, if you had access to healthy blood and you could transfuse yourself maybe once a week with a pint of blood from a young person, maybe under the age of 20, might be helpful. Wait, 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 hold on. Wait, so but it's you're... not practical. There's no way you could have access or do that, and ethically, I couldn't tell you to do that. No, hold, uh, okay, but theoretically, let's say theoretically I did. Let's say theoretically 
Well, Brian, researchers at Harvard found out there's a youth protein called GDF11 present in the bloodstream in large quantities when we're young, but peters on we age. And apparently this can have an effect on muscle mass, potentially on Alzheimer's too. But it's got a really amazing capacity to store aging muscle and brain function. But again, it's not realistic. Do, 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 Dr. Andrew, I, I, I just, you know, I'm a simple man here. I just want to, if I'm understanding you correctly, are you saying that it's possible, theoretically, all of this, theoretically, it's theoretically possible that stealing the blood of the young and using it for sustenance could have helpful life extending benefits for the old. Just, I we'll mean, if you could just say that. Vampire therapy. <laughs> with, is, is that what they call it? They call it vampire therapy? Who's that? We're just two guys having a conversation <laughs> under medical privilege. Oh, uh, man. I got to get my daughter in on the room. Uh, okay, look. Um, I'm not going to lie. I got this blood and I got this supply, and I'm just going to start. Oh, yeah, but. Okay, so here's a here's a quick question. Sidebar, sidebar. Pause on the conversation. Uh, this is a quality of life thing, right? Because while it's not it's not a bag of giggles to have your blood drawn every week, uh, if you know all things being equal, you would choose not to have your blood drawn because you have too much blood. Uh, but wouldn't you also prefer not to have to inject yourself with blood, blood especially if you don't know? What the uh, what the difference is, right? Like like or or whether or not it's going to work or like how how would big of a the studies would say that you're probably going to have an improvement in quality of life. Really? Mm -hmm. Like like uh, uh, Dr. Andrew, give me a uh, back to the game. Uh, Dr. Andrew, give me a percentage here. Like what like how much of an improvement are we talking? Well, I would say that you're going to find that you're going to recover faster from working out. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So you 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 you're saying you're saying like 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 my muscles deteriorate when I'm when I'm bench pressing and and doing all that stuff. You're saying like essentially are we talking about like like legit like steroids without is there any side effects? Is there any downside to this? I think if you if you account for if you're matching type to type and unless your daughter has malaria um you'll probably be more, be effective. I mean that's blood doping things like that are techniques used by Athletes. Well, I had heard. I had heard that uh, that um, uh, what's his name, uh, uh, Lance Armstrong. There were allegations that Lance Armstrong was, uh, among other things, injecting oxygen-rich blood into mm -hmm. uh, into his body in order to perform extra well during uh, uh, during the tour to or various tours, whatever. Uh, man, this is amazing. You just blew the hell out of my mind, out the back of my skull. So. So I'm saying, I'm just as your doctor. Yes, I could. If you ask me for an extra prescription of syringes and stuff because of your daughter's condition. Sure. Well, we just, you know, we just want to make sure. I, I've been lousy with. Uh, I mean, I feel bad for the blood bank. We sure as hell aren't going back there. <laughs> like at, at this point, I'm, I'm dumping all of that just straight into me. Are you kidding me? Would you really though? Um. Oh man, now now you now you found it. Okay, all things being real. Truthfully, if Penny had that condition, I would take her to the blood bank and it would be part of our regular thing. Once we started doing it, I don't think we could ever stop doing it because that would be the moral decision of deciding to stop donating a regular supply of blood where it's badly needed for 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 immediate life-saving conditions. However, in another scenario where we're just draining the extra blood and flushing it down or in that scenario, you know, for whatever reason, like, you know, that's just what we've always done. And I think I would. Penny's uh, like, I don't want to go to blood bank, daddy. You're like, you just want to do it at home? We can do it at home, kiddo. And it's like, daddy, give me a piggyback ride. You're too winded. You're like, daddy, let's take my blood. I, I think I would. I think I would, and I, I can't imagine why I would feel bad about it. I, I uh, wow. That's... Do, you, do you do you go to Bonnie with this? Oh, of course. I mean, uh, you know me. It's like I can't. I can't. I can't. I I am un incapable of circumventing the 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 wife. I, I'm no good at holding at holding secrets from All her. Right. I be Bonnie. You be you. <laughs> I want you to present this <laughs> argument to me. Okay. <laughs> uh Hey, sweetie. Uh, listen, you know that um, you know our daughter. Right, the, your balls cut, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Don't worry, no more children. Uh, Got them cut, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't look, look. 
This is what's great about a relationship, Bonnie, is that we give and take, right? We we, we give and take. You give, I take. <laughs> so as you know, our daughter has too much blood, right? And right now we're flushing it down the drain. You're flushing it, Brian. That's disgusting. I don't even think that's illegal. Well, <laughs> it, it's, I thought you were supposed to be taking her to the blood bank. <laughs> well, you know, we haven't been. It's been um, sort of been draining it just lately. And... Um, Look, all things being equal, I, all of a sudden I'm realizing there's no way Monty would let me do this. <laughs> she would, she, <laughs> I can think of no situation which I would probably go for it. I would throw it out there, uh, I, but I'm pretty sure she'd say no. And in fact, actually, here, do me, do me a favor. Uh, if you'll tell everyone about our fabulous Patreon, I'm going to peek downstairs and see if Bonnie's downstairs right all now right. and try to bring her in. We are trying to bring weird things to the next level. And what we want to do by that is we want to keep producing every single Sunday. We want to bring in a producer to provide show notes, make sure this thing goes up. And the way we're doing that is if you go to patreon.com slash weird things, that's Patreon spelled P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash weird things. You can see what we're doing right now. Things have been off to a tremendous start. We have at this point, point right now we have 252 patrons are supporting us you can support us at any level you want one cent is totally cool well Two and remember cents. it's the it's it's we're less concerned with the um, the dollar amount than the number of patrons because it's like you know, remember you get the uh, you get the weird things links and all that stuff uh, we're already halfway to our primary goal uh, and and super super excited because as you guys know we've been very naughty about the way that, that the amount of time we've been able to dedicate to weird things. But uh, it's awesome to have it not even be a discussion whether or not we were going to do an episode today without Justin. It's like, of course we are. It's a job now. So we're going to, mm -hmm. we're going to, we're going to do this for our patrons. And if you, if you, you, you can't subscribe or do anything on there, but you're a fan of the show, tell a friend, tell a friend about this, this wonderful show where I ask Brian if he'll drain the blood oh, of his healthy child. By, by the way, uh, I, I peeked my head over and I shouted, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. No, no, no. Bonnie just shut up wide-eyed asking if everything is okay. Uh, <laughs> but I, told, I, I told Betty to run and find her mom because we have, uh, I, didn't, I don't think I said an emergency. I think we said we had a, um, a, a weird thing situation. Right. Uh, we need to have a very real discussion, okay? Uh, well, in, in this scenario, uh, here, uh, say, say hello, Bonnie, real quick. Hello. Oh, there we go. Okay. All right. Hey, Bonnie. I am sorry. Can I take a break? I know you're setting stuff. I have needed to pee for two hours. And <laughs> all right. All right. All right. All right. You go, you I go thought ahead. you were, I thought something was, somebody was hurt. No, you, you we're actually do, live right now. Yeah, we're, we're live. We have an important, okay, that's, that's a weird thing. <laughs> Turns out girls do pee. I didn't know that. Wow. Crazy. <laughs> All right, so she'll be right back, and we'll have our real conversation in this fictitious scenario. But just to wrap things up on the Patreon, um, man, I'm so excited. I'm so excited to start treating, uh, as, as, as our longtime fans know, uh, Night Attack is a healthy, thriving, independent podcast, thanks to Patreons, uh, or patrons. Uh, same thing with Cord Killers, and we are so stoked to make Weird Things the third leg of this uh, uh, triad in this little Diamond Club community that we got going. It is. It is. Uh, the the support so far has been fantastic. Again, e even if you just tell friends to listen to the podcast, that's wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. What we have planned for you is obviously doing this on a regular basis. Once a week, one of us wants to get in uh, Google Hangout and just chat anything you want, whatever, free for all. We're going to do that. We're going to be starting up the Andrew Main My Secret Weird List, which is all of the weird links and things like that. I which, which by the way, can, can we go ahead and highlight? I know, I know, technically it's supposed to be a secret insider list, but uh, can we talk about the ethical issue that that you forwarded over to to us this week? What was the ethical issue? It was a it was a Wired.com article. Um, oh yeah, uh, saying uh, and and this is the kind of thing. Um, let's see, yeah. Andrew Main sends a quick email, and this is the kind of thing that happens two or three times a week. I get an email from Andrew that says, I'm with this guy. There's a world of difference between SpaceX and what Virgin Galactic is trying. Okay. And I click on an article that we're about to come back to because i got to talk to Bonnie about uh, our idea. But it's, it's from Wired Magazine titled, Space Tourism Isn't Worth Dying For. We'll come back to that in a moment. Uh, but that's the kind of thing that you get early on the, on the weird list. Uh, but now Bonnie's back. Hey, Bon, how are you doing? Hi, doing good. Listen. Hello, Miss Brushwood. Well, hello, Andrew. How are you? In this scenario, <laughs> as you know, mm -hmm. our daughter Penelope yes. has, what was it called again? 
Uh, polycythermia or something. Poly. Yeah, it's it's a condition where she just produces too much blood. She's perfectly healthy. Okay. Outside of that, so is well, this a real thing? Uh, well, it's yes. a real disease. Yeah, but oh, in, wow. in this situation, she has this disease. Um, we've been, as you know, going. God forbid. <laughs> yeah, she as, has. It. Uh, yes, Penny has it in this scenario. So, as you know, we've been going to the blood bank once a week to unload some extra blood and do okay. a little bit of good for the community. Yeah. Um, <laughs> here's the weird thing mm -hmm. in this scenario. Okay. <laughs> I wish you could see Bonnie's eyes. You know yes. how I don't like making it personal. Her skeptical just... eyes. It's not bad. Don't worry. Right. Um, <clears throat> here's the thing. Uh, I went and visited my doctor, Dr. Andrew Maine, mm -hmm. and yeah. he brought to my attention a Harvard study yeah. that said- well, I point out Brian's decrepit condition, the fact that Brian is getting older- uh -huh. But also, he pointed out that I have a genetic predisposition to early onset Alzheimer's. Yeah, and that uh, and that you know I'm getting older and weaker. Right. And he proposed a potential treatment that has so far proven. I hypothesized. Results. I made no connection between the study <laughs> and actual recommended treatment for yourself. <laughs> okay. He hypothesized uh, the fact that there's a uh, was it a Harvard study. Yeah, Harvard study. Harvard, one of the people that studied it. Okay. They're pretty legit. They are pretty legit. Uh, there's substantial benefits. And, to... doc, and, and Kim Il-jung does this too. Kim Il-jung does it? Okay, this you're not helping. Get out of here. Dr. Andrew, Get it. leave the room. <laughs> what, hey, how did you get into my house? <laughs> um, uh, there are substantial benefits me. to older people uh, transfusing the blood of younger people specifically under 20 years old into them they recover <laughs> she's already shaking her head <laughs> now keep in mind in this scenario brian's just figured out that he made a poor choice on uh on friday he said he's not harvesting the the blood of younger brushwoods I, I, you go in every week you get like you know all right a through alpha through uh i don't know is there an l where, where is this alpha added? beta i don't know yeah delta or whatever uh here's the important question right is in this scenario penny's got too much blood uh and I yeah you do it i want to work out and 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 recover faster from what Oh, from working out. My muscles will be stronger. Oh, I'll that's it. You're just purely selfish? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I thought you said he had Alzheimer's. Well, I might. Too. Down he, the he'll road. get dumber slower. I'll get dumber slower. I'll stay sharper longer, and I'll recover faster from my workouts. Now, you you having a condition <laughs> might make it so that our daughter volunteers. In which case, I don't know. Well, okay. Understand. Yeah. Understand. That the benefits, uh, uh, yes, theoretically, it will stave off uh, Alzheimer's 20, 30 years from now. Uh, but in the short term, like, I'll be stronger and more muscular. Here's the ethical dilemma. Yeah. Understand, uh, we stopped going to the blood bank in order to do this. Yeah, you're not helping people. You don't know where that blood goes, though. Uh, at the blood bank? Yeah. Oh, Vampires wait. might be taking it. <laughs> <laughs> in which case, what's okay, the point you understand, in you? I'm the vampire in this <laughs> scenario. I'm taking it directly from our daughter so that I can look better working out and be more youthful. Oh, oh, yeah, that's pretty sick. Um, but do you get a TV show because you look good? Uh, yeah. It happened. You're It'll so, help. Yeah, she's doing her part. <laughs> 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 so it would help. It would certainly help with with TV and stage performing. You know, he'll be able to, you know, be the breadwinner longer doing those things. Yeah. You know, he'll, so, the so stamina seriously. will be there too, which could help in other places. Um, and maybe every live show he t makes a call for people to donate blood. Talks about how his family, you know, his family. <laughs> oh my you know, god! We're, we're you know that. Talk about how donated blood. blood makes such a difference in the lives of people. <laughs> Even my daughter donates blood, and it makes me feel great. And then so and so okay. So so the question is like, I guess this is the the ethical dilemma. Right. Is I personally benefit. Uh, we stop giving blood because I guess 
like I guess you know something about what happens to blood that gets donated, right? Some of it gets flushed down. Well, or? I mean, some of it, uh, you know. Mo- actually, if you are <laughs> if you are feeling like you want to do some real good, you know, money gets flushed down the toilet when you donate money sometimes. Yeah, to yeah, charities. that's true. But blood really does get used. So for the most part, but there are times like when you have a surplus of a certain common blood it might not get used in which case you know um they they, they, they surely don't flush down the toilet there's got to be like some back room like sales to cosmetics yeah the van yeah the van yeah oh yeah well i don't know if they can do that with donated blood i, I mean, know that not some le- platelet not legally but some that- platelet places uh actually do that like when you donate platelets at a third party right yeah anytime not- you get paid for a donation whether yes. it's semen or plasma or anything like I guess semen's actually given to individual clients, clients. But but I know that when you donate, I'm using air quotes, uh, plasma right. that ends up in cosmetics, uh, right. and you're paid for it, right? Um, right? Exactly. So okay, but so but but this is kind of shocking to me because yeah. I know you're very pro blood bank or whatever, and you'd rather see me personally. I guess I personally would be living longer. Well, like. Uh... Bonnie, you can get you on know. it too. We'll just say you, you can accept it. You can get what? in on this. I can Nate get in on it. has your blood type, so we'll do a little trade. Just, you know, I don't know. It's, you know, you don't know if it's going to get used or not used. Now, if she's, if she, I don't know. Although first. they have called me and said, we have a baby waiting for your blood oh, right geez. now. Oh, jeez. I told you. Really? I, the yeah. What's his name? They said... <laughs> They said there is a baby, and they have to come in for weekly trans. It was in the mother's womb, in fact, and they were. Wait, they do fran- tra- uh, uh, transfusions. <laughs> they do trans in, in vitro? vitro transfusions oh, for man. a child that would would be normally healthy, but they're having trouble throughout the pregnancy because of a blood loss situation. So they were, um, they were taking. They had people scheduled to come in and donate Man. their blood. So, so here's, you know, I, like, I used to donate blood, and then I would get those manipulative phone calls. Oh, um, I know, I know, right? But it'd be so like, good at uh, it. Uh, is it a white baby? <laughs> oh! Is that what you would say? Just see what they say, and they'd say yes. I'd be like, uh, I feel like I want to help the disadvantaged more. <laughs> <laughs> You're know, like, we'll take your racist blood. <laughs> Presbyterian? Mm, I'm sorry. You know, whatever it is, the opposite answer. I would just like totally, you know, <laughs> just to me, see what they said. Tell oh, me you God. actually did this. Did you really? <laughs> I kind of feel like Andrew oh. would. <laughs> Not that. My blood, I want for the people of the world. All the children of the world may have my blood. <laughs> Gosh, and of all the people to mess with, I guess I don't know. They're actually uh, I don't know. I guess if you're just doing it selfishly, then I'm just. But you know what? Here's the weird thing. But like, if you had a condition that, like, oh, your dad might be there for your grandchildren one day, don't you know? Then like, that's her choice because she wants dad to like be like there. Like, if you had Alzheimer's, it's her blood. Her blood, her choice. I would. She's gonna be wiping the drool off your chin. I know. I would totally help my daddy if I thought. So 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 here's you know you know what makes this feel weird is Mm -hmm. the absolute absence of a third party intermediary because we feel good about the idea of penny giving extra blood to a blood bank we mm-hmm. also would feel good if there was just a hospital down the road and i could afford the treatment uh i go in and i get some extra blood yeah who knows where it comes from i just go i you know pay a lot of money keeps me healthy staves off the uh the alzheimer's well, the real question is penny is what does penny want? well yeah i mean basically it would have to be her decision but i can tell you i know penny well as her legal guardian yeah <laughs> we're gonna win. i just no. i just want to see like what kind of pressure would she feel <laughs> dad's <laughs> I, I, I come home on passive aggressive like oof tough workout today Tough workout. Uh, no, I think you, oh, you, 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 you want to play. Yeah, dad's just real tired. He's no, real I think tired. He's, I think he's more passive aggressive than that. He comes in and she's like, hey, dad. And you're like, who are you? you know? <laughs> <laughs> or it's the other way around. She's like, hey, daddy, uh, I'd love a pony. <laughs> Yeah. Wait, you want a pony? Daddy will get you a pony. He'll get you whatever you want, man. Dad, uh, Daddy loves you. Dad, Dad thinks you're the best thing ever. Look at me bench press. <laughs> I guarantee you she would take it that direction eventually. <laughs> man, would we keep it a secret? I guess I guess you'd have to tell That's her. That's too what? Well, I, I, I mean, does it doesn't matter? Okay, here's so, another ethic. Wait, so, this is... Be, yeah, you don't tell her. 
Right. Middle of the night, she walks in there, and you're sitting in your but, chair with her blood bag, clearly, because yeah. like she wrote her name like Penny for the for with the little, poor people without blood she written drew on it. A, a dragon on there with little stars and <laughs> yeah. stuff. She's like dragon blood for the babies. There you, there's Daddy. <laughs> He's yeah, like, that's he's caught. That's the thing is 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 how much do we tell her? Because I guess as her legal guardians, we could just take her blood and inject it. No, of you course you can't. Just, no, you couldn't. Yeah, no. She uh, like like we we are. Uh, she's not a person until she's eighteen. We have to sign like like she can't go off and act in a serial commercial without us uh, signing a piece of paper because but we can't just take her children's right. blood. She's first I mean, I, 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 I mean, I I'm thinking legal legally, right? Like like uh, away from ethically, I mean legally i think we decide for her is yeah. that's the whole point of guardianship right well you're, you're the guardian of her rights but she still has personhood though brian yes yeah, well does. i know but she's I mean, also they can't got take blood her away that from could us make me were... strong <laughs> 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 they could take you take her away if they felt like you weren't honoring her as a as a person yeah. so could it count as child abuse they ask in the now, chat I, in in this case scenario i'm only okay with it if there was some kind of staving off of a of a, thing. a serious condition. A serious so, condition. So, okay. So, so in this scenario, right. uh, there was a predisposition. You, nothing's for sure, but there's a predisposition for um, right. Alzheimer's. So that's what makes you okay with it. But if I'm like, hey, man, I have a predisposition of not looking awesome if unless I get our yeah, child's I blood. Think just, I think I'll just like, you know what? I'll set your alarm 10 minutes earlier and get your butt I, out of bed. I, and- I want to know. I think yeah. we should visit some of the point because when we can hear Penny's answer to this because I think that's that's – Penny's downstairs. Bonnie, you want to go I get Penny? I think this is too weird to be putting in a kid's head. <laughs> no I do. I'm sorry. And as her legal garden guardian, we're like, we want your blood so daddy can look sexy. I don't, I don't know. I think that's just too much, guys. So I'm going to put my foot down. All right. All right. You all say right. no. That's, so, that's really. Which, by the way, that tells me the real answer on this whole thing. Like, if you're not even comfortable proposing the hypothesized version of this to our child there's no way you would let would me not, ask her in real life not for you to look sexy i mean come on <laughs> That's, I, I didn't bring that up that was your gear <laughs> you didn't want brian to look sexy you don't care about well that, of course right? i want him to <laughs> <laughs> what about you andrew I I, I, I are really... you soliciting young children's blood <laughs> I am. I have lawyers exploring the legal framework in which to do that, and okay. I have public relations consultants trying to figure out the best way to position it. But anything I can do. There's so a couple annoying kids here that, like, you know, if I could pay them a couple bucks, you know, that serve some purpose, you know, in where I live, the apartment complex. Like, if you guys want to be loud, you got to donate blood. <laughs> <laughs> and you have at it. Hey, so, um, how much does it take? Like, is it a uh, we'll like, say we'll say a pint a week for our hypothetical thing. For, this but, is hypothetical. But you have you have actual data on that, right, Doctor Andrew? I, I I didn't look that. You're far. like I'm sorry, I wasn't allowed in here. I was told it's not ethical to climb in your window and listen yeah. in on your conversation. Yeah. I'm Doctor Andrew. Anyone need a pot prescription? <laughs> um, speaking Dr. of Andrew. ethical issues, uh, mm. do you want to explain to Bonnie? Because I tried to do it and I did. I wasn't quite able to get there. Um, this uh, this wired.com article space tourism isn't worth dying for so there's been a couple so virgin galactic had a a very tragic accident this week where Mm. spaceship two had an incident we're still awaiting the ntsb report on it they lost one pilot another pilot was seriously injured when they were doing a test where the the way the spaceship two works is it has a a large aircraft called the white knight that takes spaceship two up to like 50,000 feet or something like that, then Spaceship Mm -hmm. Two detaches, turns on an engine, and then tries to go much, much higher. Spaceship Two is derived from Spaceship One, which won the X Prize. Spaceship Two is- By the way, Spaceship Two, when it goes higher, I mean, it gets very, very high. It gets high enough to see the blackness of space. Um, uh, uh, Not not out of the atmosphere entirely, would you say, or- So that's part of the debate. Part of the debate, there is a discussion, and it, it is, we don't know what happened yet, and so we don't want to pass any sort of judgment on that until we have a little more facts about what took place. But the debate has said that there have been people who have been critical of Virgin Galactic's approach because of the design. that they, the Spaceship One and Spaceship Two, they look similar, but they're actually very, very different machines. And there are questions of whether or not Spaceship Two was, the, was going to be stable enough with that rocket motor. It's a hybrid rocket motor. Originally what it was, it used... Uh, Nitrous oxide pumped through essentially 
rubber tire, like pellets made of the same kind of rubber tires are. Basic, basically uh, used tires, as, essentially. P picture used tires melted into pellets, and then and then that's what's burning. I don't know if they're used, oh. but yeah, but it's rubber it, pellets. Right, and then okay. they already had one accident before, before they even did an Ignite on a rocket stand that killed three engineers several years ago. Oh. Again, it's absolutely tragic. And then now they have another fatality in testing Virgin Galactic. And this is a the Virgin Galactic Spaceship 2. Is, was intended, they were hoping, again, they keep having delays, but they were hoping next year to have paying passengers on the craft. Yeah. In trying to scale up the rocket motor, they ran into issues, and so they changed it from using essentially rubber pellets to like nylon sort of plastic pellets. It was a different design, and there's some people who've said, we've warned them, we've told them this was a design problem, and we don't, again, know what caused the issue here, but it was the first time they tested this new engine, in the spaceship. And, and the biggest criticism I've heard is people said, listen, this system was inherently unsafe before. Spaceship One barely made it into, into the, the, uh, the layer, the 62 mile point. And the engine was very, very full of vibrations. And Spaceship Two had a lot of problems and never came anywhere close to going that. And there are people said it would never, Spaceship Two is not a spaceship. They said it would never reach space mm -hmm. based upon the instability of that, which it's all hearsay. You know, it's, it's you know, intelligent people saying this, but it brings up this issue. You know, this is a tourism thing. The idea was this was this was supposed to be for space tourism. And I've personally felt that I am super pro space. I'm super pro private, super pro public. I'm super pro lots of people putting money into figuring out how to get there. I think some efforts are going to be better funded, better managed than others. And I can't say anything about Virgin Galactic because I don't know anything about it. I know that their their approach was much more ambitious than I would probably have tried, where a company like SpaceX has taken existing technology then tried to improve it as much as you can, where this approach was using proven stuff in some areas, but not in a different approach. So hmm. um, I think that I, I, given so, that we can't bring astronauts up reliably without blowups, I don't know if we're ready for tourism yet. Well, no, the, no, the no. question that's raised by this article in particular, it's, you know, space tourism isn't worth dying for. And, and essentially the, the author makes all the same points that you are, you know, yes, let's go for all these. But but the author uh, is very down on the idea of uh, of of the way Virgin Galactic is going about it, because it is a ship that is built not to go into space, but to get close enough to space to give a thrill ride. And essentially, this is the sticky idea. He says it's the world's most expensive roller coaster. There, he says that there's no scientific benefit to it. You're not actually going to space. You're not going to get off planet or any of these things. Uh, there's, there's, um, and therefore, he says we shouldn't do it. And that's the part mm -hmm. that's difficult for me because... Uh, it's I feel like, yes, it does SpaceX have the better plan? Do they have the better track record? Do they have the better everything? Yes, well, they and do. There's, and there's X Core too is another one that's doing liquid fueled and trying to do the same thing that Virgin Galactic's doing, but they're saying we don't trust that technology. We're gonna use liquid fueled. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I guess, but but I uh, so so let's place all of them. In fact, in the great list of ideas, let's put Virgin Galactic way back at the back with a more risky dangerous almost last place design and let's let's say even then that they're only doing it to cash in on space fever from uh multi-millionaires mm -hmm. um the question is uh, raised by the article is should they be allowed to do it and 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 i i've really wrestled with this because i feel like um, the reason, and certainly in the wake of this disaster, in the wake that, that that they've already had accidents in the past, they have a track record of of killing people working on this project. Mm -hmm. uh, in the wake of that, should they not be allowed to do it? And at the end of the day, this is this is people looking at someone else's vision of of a of a uh, it, uh, you know this is what happens is the farther behind you are from first place the riskier a plan mm -hmm. you take. And sometimes, you know, we celebrate the people that it pays off for in a big way, including Richard Branson in the music market, you know? Right. Um, I, I, I would, first of all, I'd say the easy answer is that if you're following what the FAA requirements are and you're being honest in your disclosures and you're following the government regulations, then yes, you should be allowed to pursue and take certain risks. That's That's the point of it. There's a criticism that said that they realized early on that they designed the shape of the spaceship first and then designed the rocket and then they built oh. their spaceship and they realized the rocket wasn't right. This is the claim. Okay. Realized the rocket wasn't going to work 
And what they should have done was to redesign the entire spaceship for liquid fuel, but that was too expensive to do, and they kept trying to find a cheaper way to make it work. So, but that's that's just, the claim. Yeah, that's, that is the claim. the claim. I, I am not an aeronautic engineer. Have no idea inside what's going on there. I've been impressed and amazed with the Virgin Galactic and what uh, scaled composites and what Burt Rutan has designed before. I'm a big fan of Burt Rutan. Let me make that very very clear. Yeah. So, well, you know, but the instant disclosure saying what the claims are. There was something in the news a while back that struck me. Um, where some movie star, somebody with lots of money had a fancy car, and then they let their mechanic take it for a spin, and they both died in their car wreck. Oh, yeah, you, you're talking about uh, the guy from Fast and the Furious. Yeah, uh, yeah. 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 So, yeah. like, so what's different there? I mean, he has a powerful, you know, how well, how far off I mean, I mean, should I mean, he <laughs> not have been allowed to have that car? Or should only people with I mean, that's, that's, licenses, that's got know? a number of differences because, yeah. you know, they were definitely speeding. They were definitely oh, they were outside driving. Of the, uh, and, yeah. yeah. Well, I, no, no, no. I mean, like they, 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 were, they were breaking were, laws. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it gets there's a certain point where you say, go assume your own risk. I mean, that yeah. that's certainly a fair thing to say. I think that from the point of view, if you're asking, I think we're all going to agree Um. I mean, Brian and I are going to agree that, you know, ultimately people should be free to choose what they want to do if they understand the risk and the risks are made clear. I think that's I think the baseline is that if you're asking us what would we recommend and what would we personally say, would I would I want to back personally a a space tourism venture right now financially? No, I wouldn't, because I don't think the technology is mature enough. I think that, you know, and also like the tech, you know, the, the way that the ship is designed, to my understanding, they can't have it fly robotically and just test Oh, that engine. Oh, Just they they have to have an actual pilot in there. To my under, like yeah. it, understanding, the, the, to my understanding, yeah, it can't do remotely piloted. They have to have pilots on board it to test no, it. Which Brian, that's... the advantage of Falcon Nine, the advantage of a lot of these other ones is. I'm. Oh, by the way, I'm going to be going in uh, early part of December. I've been invited to go to a NASA launch where they're going to test the Orion. So the Orion's oh. the next generation crew capsule that awesome. NASA's developing. Nice. That's a big leap forward into space exploration, there's not going to be anybody on board it. It's going to be on top of an Atlas rocket that's flown, Uh a design that's flown dozens of times, you know, which is they have an idea of an expectation of error margins, whatever, but we're not putting anybody in this thing when we test it. You know, we're going to launch this thing on top of a very heavy booster, put it up there, but there's a lot of steps to get there. Mm-hmm. Dude, uh, number one, that's awesome. I don't know how yeah. you score that invite, but yeah, I'm extremely great. jealous. That's very cool. Uh, but I guess NASA I, show, uh, if you follow at NASA Social on Twitter, they frequently will say, "Hey, we're doing this." You know, the public anybody can apply to go do it. So cool, dude. Um, and by the way, that's the the big secret backdoor. Like, like nobody likes the idea of following a brand, but that's those people all have power, and yeah. they all are direct conduits. Mm-hmm. And all you have to do is express an interest in whether it's yeah. cookies. So they do, or, and NASA Social is a great program. It's NASA their way of engaging a social media. So they they create opportunities for people to do podcasts and other things to do that. I've gone. This will be the second one I've gone to. I went to a, a, a one of the first SpaceX launches for the ISS. Sweet. Yeah. Uh, for that, and you know, it's it's a great program because they understand the importance of that. And I said, well, I do a thing called Weird Things. I talk about our audience here, and so that's how I got invited. That's awesome. Bonnie yeah. had a question. Yeah, uh, didn't your grandfather on your dad's side? Yeah, uh, no, uh, was... my, my my biological grandfather uh, died as a test pilot for the Air Force. Wow. Yeah. 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 Uh, wow, I can't believe this has never come up before. Yeah, huh? uh, I... <laughs> yeah, uh, it's uh, uh, so so. I mean, I guess I guess, I mean it's weird because like my dad, my dad was too young at the time to really. He barely has a uh, uh, a memory of it, and there's uh, uh, internally some questions about whether it was equipment malfunction or. Um, as is, uh, as you know, Andrew, uh, what the number one cause of plane crashes uh, in commercial flights has been. Uh, do you know? Birds? No, no. Uh-huh. Um, uh, it's it's thought that most commercial airline flight crashes have been essentially masked suicides. Oh yeah, yeah. I've heard and that. and and so there's 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 thoughts that that might have been what happened here. But it, but he was a test pilot. I should dig up his story. That would be really interesting to explore yeah. and uh, yeah. and share on the podcast. But I know that. Um, uh, and, and I, you know, I wonder if how much of that him. might have just been like go for the glory and outside of your comfort range or, you know, I just wonder. Yeah. I mean, knows? you have to be. Uh, but but at any rate, I guess I guess that. as ugly as it is, as even even as gross and as icky as it feels that that here's Virgin uh, running a company that much like the shuttle program, you know, has has a knack for, you know, uh, killing a set percentage of everyone who works on it. Um, I, I, I gotta I gotta be down with 
with them continuing if they want to continue. And I got to be down with crazy millionaires spending a quarter million dollars for a roller coaster ride. I, I think that, you know, I think the question is there's an information problem too. The guy who's making the decisions at the top of, of again, we use a, a SpaceX reference. The guy making decisions at the top of SpaceX, the big financial decisions, everything else, is also one of the smartest guys in the building. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, yeah. And and the, the people making the top financial decisions at Virgin Galactic, I don't think they have an engineering background. And I think that you have people, you know, and I don't say, and I, I guess, and that's the problem we had in NASA before too. Some of the people making the decisions to launch when other engineers were saying no, were thinking about bureaucracies and not, and, and it's a different, there are different incentives there at play. Oh. Yeah. And I, I, I encourage the spirit of that, but I, I, I have heard, I will say anecdotally, okay, mm-hmm. I have heard several instances of people who've worked behind the scenes for that who were frustrated with and said that the reasons for the delays was that just the technology was not there, that they were, they were backing the wrong thing. Yeah. And, but this again, and the beautiful thing about having multiple people, multiple groups trying to get into space Again, and that could be all hearsay. Again, I am I'm a fan of Richard Branson. I'm a fan of Burt Rutan. I'm a fan of Scale Composites. I'm a fan of. And, and by the way, for the record, the Ansari X Prize, which Spaceship One uh, won, uh, is one of the greatest success stories in incentive based. Well, it's uh, wonderful. Pri- yeah. yeah. And well, and 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 again, so anything I say, I I, I apologize if it sounds like I'm prejudging because I don't know what the hell happened. I don't know, but. There are multiple – the same Mojave, you have x which is another group which is building – There's, I think the Lynx, which is a liquid-fueled thing to do similar the thing to what Spaceship 2 is designed to do. Take one passenger up, but it's a liquid-fueled that uses a more – you know, a system we're more familiar with. A more proven, yeah. Mm-hmm. The, be- the beautiful thing is having – not when you have one monolithic bureaucracy controlling access to space, one accident stops it globally. Yes. Yeah. You know, after yes. the Challenger disaster, after – the other disasters have happened, then everything stops. But right now, SpaceX keeps to keep, gets to keep doing what they're doing. Yeah. Well, X-Force even, can uh, keep doing. Blue it, Origin keeps was, doing what they're was doing. Was it Orbital Sciences that just had a massive... Uh, Orbital Sciences uh, lost one of their rockets. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and this had uh, like, like $200 million of equipment on there, including yeah. the rocket. A uh, uh, big, big setback. But again, like uh, I mean, I guess there's a reason that uh, rocket science is literally synonymous with yeah. difficult... Yeah. You know, in, in, in the SpaceX approach, you know, eventually they want to put astronauts on theirs. But Musk's attitude is we want to have hundreds of rocket launches under our belt with the technology before we put people on top. Yeah. And yeah, that was it. That- the different business model too, though. So. It's an interesting uh, thing you touched on for for the young viewers uh, that people that have a strong interest in engineering can really benefit if they also have a predisposition predis position to nailed it good job thank you yeah. <laughs> to also the business sense because Absolutely. that's that's um brian's been brian's dad's um uh, success in his career is that he had the uh he was, he was able an to accountant he was that an moved accountant. into management and so mm-hmm. as a result he had an inherent like but he also had somewhat of an engineering uh, uh, understanding with engineering well um, he was in the petro- petroleum industry but his background was in accounting absolutely right. uh, uh, but he was able uh, to speak with the engineers i mean that's what he said he was like i was yeah. able to understand what the engineers were saying yeah. and communicate that to my higher ups and so being somebody who can cross that bridge is a vital uh is a vital position in in these companies and and to speak clearly to to the needs of both so that people's people aren't being lost i mean to both sides of the party yeah there's there's a absolutely and that's like you know thomas edison was a complex guy and we could go on about what a jerk he is but you could right. also go on about what an awesome guy was and he was a, a, a very, very awesome guy yeah very <laughs> amazing engineer yeah. you know edison what he was you know the multiplex you know telegraph things like that and he got business you know he understood business maybe a little too well but he was that's part of the difference between the legacy of tesla and edison is that edison was smart enough to understand the technology and super smart to understand you know we became wired up with electricity with that, you know, horrible, horrible AC that he finally said, well, we'll sell them anyway, systems. But we became wired up. Henry Ford, same thing. And that's mm-hmm. been Intel, you know, was started by essentially engineers who left and sort of had a better grasp of economics. And so there's been a history of people who get the science and then the economics who make the biggest leap because it's not just you. A, a, a good idea isn't necessarily really a good idea. A good idea needs to have other good ideas around it economically to make yes. sense. 
Yes, exactly. Uh, speaking of which, uh, I, I feel like it's very fashionable and has been for the last decade as, you know, we uncover a lot of great things that Tesla did. And it's and everyone wants to make it a game of Tesla versus Edison or whatever. And Tesla has to be the good guy, even though he was kind of crazy. Uh, and uh, <laughs> Edison has to be the cat, bad guy, even though he kind of gave us light. Um, <laughs> the uh, uh, But one, one story that uh, I hadn't heard before, reading The Obstacle is the Way, um, uh, once, once you truly understand that your value as a person is not in the infrastructure that you own, but in your ability to, uh, to manage people and so on, uh, amazing things happens as an old man, uh, Edison watched his, one of his factories catch fire. And as these rare minerals start exploding in, uh, in, in, in clouds and flames of blues and greens and these amazing technicolor explosions as what undoubtedly were incredible poisons and millions in current technology or current dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars are going up in flames. The first thing he did was run home and gather, it was either his children or his grandchildren, and say, run as fast as you can. You will never see a show like this. Ever. <laughs> and and it's like the ability to I watch hundreds of millions of dollars <laughs> yeah. of your own money go up in flames just and to like, just yeah. burst in with a grin and say, check this out, check this out. This is amazing. Uh, is, like, well, we remember the time you told us to go see the show at the elephant. Uh, wait, wait, what's, what's that? The electrocution of the elephant. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Um, with that, I'm going to go do dinner. But yeah. yeah. Thank uh, you uh, I, I, you just, just to, just to wrap this up, uh, the, uh, uh, I misspoke earlier. I said, I said mass suicide. I didn't mean like everyone wanted to go down in a plane. What I mean is, uh, oftentimes, uh, things are registered as pilot error, but, uh, off the record, you know, the, there, there, there is a, a, a number of deaths and, and Carl, this is the whip smart chat room who's watching live. You know, he, pulled up the NTSB statistics saying that there's only like uh, four, you know, basically uh, any, there's only uh, five occurrences ever li listed as intentional illegal acts of sab sabotage or suicide. Basically four of them were on 9-11 and then uh, one other one. Uh, and that's it. Uh, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is stuff that get listed as pilot error, but off the record, uh, people uh, know that these people were depressed. You don't have evidence they, of it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And they know, they know that they can't, um, uh, 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 if they commit suicide, uh, you know, they, they won't get insurance for their family and blah, blah, blah. So just they have a, you know, the supposition one, is that they have a weak moment. One of the best things that ever happened to air travel in the United States was it used to be if you're a pilot and you encountered some sort of difficulty landing or taking off or some sort of what you perceived as potentially mechanical error, mm -hmm. you were not, you did not want to report it because they would, they would want to blame it on the pilot. If you said this rudder felt a little bit, you know, every time we go at SeaTac, I felt a little bit of a drift here, whatever. Because every time you reported that, your name That's went on, on your record. record. Yeah. Oh, here comes old complainy McNoFly. You know, no yeah. good. Yeah. And then they created a way for pilots to anonymously report this stuff. And then all of a sudden you saw way more incidents reports. And then you could say, we've had five anonymous reports from different areas about rudders. We need to inspect them. And then that's helped safety tremendously. That, that and, and also changing the culture inside, uh, inside of the cabin. Uh, if you read uh, Malcolm Gladwell's uh, book, um, I, I can't remember if it's Outliers or David and Goliath. Uh, David, yeah, David and Goliath. Uh, but, but in one of them, he's talking about how um, there's a problem of culture where, uh, where uh, like I want to say it was Korean Airlines, was having more uh, crashes into planes because uh, pilots were exhausted. But in the Korean culture, it wasn't appropriate to ever question or, or, or you know, even if you noticed the pilot doing something wrong, you would, or the captain, you would, you would not, as co-pilot, uh, you know, possibly interrupt them or whatever and so now they've they've taught this culture of deferential and uh uh, uh def, def, deferential differentiation deference def, deference sure. there you go culture of deference uh where it's appropriate to question everything and to and uh and you you see a little bit of that in um uh, the movie flight which is really interesting but uh at any rate cool so again um i uh you know my thoughts are with you know the family members of the Virgin Galactic pilot. I, I, I want Virgin Galactic to get on course. And, you know, I, I think that they have the ability, the right to respond to the allegations and stuff. And we'll hear the NTSB report in probably a year or whatever. And space goes on. Space goes on. There are a lot of really gifted, talented people working there. And there are a lot of ambitious people with great, you know, ideas and dreams about where they want to see the future want to go. Um, 
it's beyond us to say criticize whatever their approach is or whatever because you know we're we're two magicians doing a podcast about yeah. technology yeah. and your <laughs> things. So. That, that's a very important thing to yeah. point out. And so any any attempt by us to express <laughs> arguments we've heard is just purely that yeah. we don't. We don't know anything. Uh, so. By the way, Bonnie has left, but she does want to remind you guys that you can follow her at Invisible Wife on Twitter. <laughs> if you want to, to hear weird comments from the from the wife of a magician <laughs> and the mom of three, uh, at Invisible Wife. Thanks for popping in, Bon. Brian, you want to do picks? Yeah, we do. Uh, man, uh, do I ever have a pick that I am excited about? It's something that I started two years ago and read. But at the time I read it, loved it. I, I read just a taste of it, started plowing through it, and it wasn't finished. You ever do that? You ever have a medium that you start and then, and then all of a sudden you're like, ah, oh, now, now I have to wait for the rest of it to come out. So, mm -hmm. it, was, so it dropped off my radar and I, uh, I guess I eventually forgot about it until one uh, friend of the podcast, Rob Kreckle, uh, he gave them to Jace, Jason Murphy, but I found myself holding all six trade paperbacks of Joe Hill's amazing lock and key uh, graphic novel. Have you? Have you? Are you familiar with this? Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't read it. I'm familiar with it? Uh, okay, so you haven't read it, but uh, uh, lock and key written by Joe Hill. Joe Hill is the son of Stephen King, which I'm sure he's tired of having people point out. Uh, but uh, the the it is the story. I uh, mean. I very rarely do this, but I kind of want to recommend it totally blind without telling you a damn thing about it. Except for I will say that uh, that the artwork is exquisite. It's uh, uh, drawn and I assume inked by Gabriel Rodriguez. Uh, they are works of art. Let me just I'm going to go to Google Images and type in lock and key and see what comes up. Uh, you can see if you're looking at any of this art. Um, uh, it just pops. It's haunting. It's gorgeous. Joe Hill has clearly learned from uh, his dad the uh, uh, the lessons of good storytelling, of good world building. Uh, you see themes that, uh, if you've read any of Stephen King's stuff, that will seem familiar. The idea of, um, of of echoes between what the parents do versus what the kids do. The idea of of forgetting supernatural things that happen that uh, that, that 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 make it believable in this world. Uh, the idea of places with personality and history that echo around in your mind. Uh, I'll say this much. By the time I finished Lock and Key, uh, I sat down and I reread the first uh, five trades, which I had read before, uh, and then I got to the sixth, and I'm so glad that I reread them because uh, everything ties together from the beginning. <coughs> the very first issue, uh, there are threads that come to completions and things that are set up that you're like, holy crap, this guy had this in mind from the very beginning, right? And, and uh, there are specifically... Uh, 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 oh, doggone, I've already free. Oh, uh, one other thing I want to say about his storytelling ability is uh, unlike his father, uh, Joe Hill sticks the landing in a major way. Uh, Stephen King is often criticized for having great openers, not great closers. Joe Hill put together the most amazing closer of a graphic novel story, maybe of stories in general, that I've ever seen. I was clearly near the end and i was like i don't know how they're going to get out of this i don't i don't see how any of this is possible i don't see and then everything comes together and i swear to you man i uh, as you can imagine in any good story there are parts that make you happy there are parts that make you sad uh i was i was literally crying uh blubbering uh and legitimately terrified this is a horror world comic and he has managed to introduce ideas that are deeply, deeply haunting. Less for the functional, uh, uh, the function. Oh, I, I, I don't, I, I don't even want to say anything for fear of spoilers. Uh, the art is exquisite. The story is amazing. Um, I, I was deeply, deeply moved by it. Uh, lock and key is is. I, people keep asking me, you know, how good it is. And, uh, you know, I've, I've read a whole bunch of other stuff. I've, you know, read thousands of Marvel comics. I've read, you know, you know, all, all of the walking dead until I got distracted. Uh, you know, why the last man, but, but I've never read a better, uh, graphic novel than, than lock and key right. beginning middle Quite an endorsement there. Yes. 
So that's uh, my pick. And that's L-O-C-K-E for the audio listeners. A I, lot I got indie. nothing that can top that, but I can tell you this. Uh, and this is more of a uh, uh, seasonal pick. It's out of season now. But should you find yourself in the Southern California area around Halloween next year? Next year. Next year, perhaps. The Queen Mary. It's a ship permanently moored at Long Beach. It's been there for... 50 years now, 40 or 50 years, okay? Used to, it was sailed the, uh, sailed the Atlantic back in the 30s and the 40s and then finally came to rest there and it's become an attraction. It's a hotel. I'll actually be staying there in a couple weeks for a writer's conference nearby. But come Halloween, they do a really cool thing called Dark Harbor where they set up, uh, they actually have haunted mazes that go through the bowels of the ship. So at some points you're going through the engine room, you go through the old pool area there, which is this, you know, 30s era tiled pool. There's a ballroom. There's a woman who appears right now who stands there eerily there watching you as you walk through there. It's just a really neat way to use an environment to create a haunted house attraction. So I would have to say it's probably one of my favorite haunted house attractions I've ever been to because they have like, I think like seven mazes total. And the incorporation of actually going through this this very old ship is a really neat part of it. So, well, I'll tell you what I would imagine. Uh, I guess that's that's one of the things is is I I know that you you were saying I think it was in the pre show that 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 like when you go through a haunted house, uh, no matter how you dress it up, you're very aware that you're no more than five feet away from a from a fog machine. Uh, like like I would imagine the genuine history of being on the genuine ship really lends some uh, 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 credibility to the experience. Yeah, because the problem is, is that a really good haunted house, you shouldn't be looking at paper mache and having to pretend yes. that yes. it's real. You know, And that's really good ones tend to use organic environments to create that. One of my favorite ones is the, so the San Francisco Dungeon, which is a really cool haunted historical attraction they have there in San Francisco. I love that. Um, highly, highly recommended. But this I liked because a lot of the elements really took advantage of the ship. They went on. I did. I did another one. I'm not going to name it. Did another one Saturday night where they put the hood over your head and they walk you through it. And parts of it are kind of cool, but you're always aware that it's just you're in a warehouse with a bunch of you know fabric tapped taped to the walls and some props and stuff they gathered there trying to create something scary, but it never I, felt real or I, authentic. I would imagine perversely that once you have the uh, hood over your head and you're relying on your other senses, you only become more aware of the well, fact that you're in a... Well, they took the hood, the hood off. Hood's only on your head for a little while. Oh, okay. All right. I would have been cool with it being like, you know, create a you know, 20 minute hood on your head interaction. There could have been so much they could have done, but it was one of these things where, you know, I heard the hype about this thing. I was going to Saturday. I'm like, oh, this sounds cool. And I go there. I'm like, I'm walking going, all right. All right, never, never a moment of fear or anything or any yeah, anxiety. But, uh, now, all. keep in mind also, like you have a high bar for that because I've gone through Halloween Horror Nights with you, and it's like, uh, like uh, you, you tend to be fairly unflappable. Whereas, like I go in and it's like I buy in a hundred percent on anything. Like if my daughter uh, sets up a haunted house, I'm pretty sure she could get me scared, and then yeah, I'll take her. Yeah, I mean, like I had fun at Dark Harbor though. I because part of it was it felt a lot of it, it was really authentic because you're really going through an engine room and they're doing that and. There are ways, if you want to do psychological haunted houses, I think there are ways to do it and to really, you know, to unnerve you. And there are ways to go about it where if you're not, if, if, if you, if the th first thing you see when you see a paper mache spider is you see the paper mache, not because you're trying to, but just because it's, I don't because, know. Well, I, I mean, part of that, I, here's what I'm going to say is I'm just saying that, 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 that you are a less forgiving audience than I am. I'm a very forgiving sure. audience. I, so, I think so that, for you. Like, and I don't mean that as a diss on anyone else. I just mean like like that's a real endorsement to the Queen Mary's Dark Harbor. If you if if that rang awesome for Andrew Maine, then that's saying it, it was just a fun. I it was just a fun kind of like I had more fun there than Halloween Horror Nights, and wow. and uh, I, I think Halloween Horror Nights. The problem with Halloween Horror Nights is its success. Is that you know they, you you go through a haunted house, they got to put a thousand people through there, and every ride is so short. Yeah, it's all where it's all a conga line. Yeah, is where it's at at Halloween Horror Nights. That's why you go as the entertainment. Yeah, that's true. So you got like a lot of uh, uh, that makes sense. And also a big thing that they sell is the number of different haunted houses and go to this one, do that one, do this one. But it sounds like this is a longer single singular experience. I mean, Dark Harbor, the, the, I would say they were they felt about two to three times longer than most haunted houses I've been in, which was cool. So you got a full experience. Um, and then uh, the one I went to, you know, last night, the problem is there is like you get towards the end of it and they're like only nine more rooms to go. I'm like, thank goodness, because I'm ready. And then you find out there's like two more rooms. And that was just there. And it's like, oh, that was a psychological trick. To, yeah, uh... I'm like, yeah, I feel great. Now I feel cheated. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> 
there's part of it where you walk out of it and I'm like, oh, go to the ne- this next thing. And you're kind of like, it feels kind of like the game where you're like, okay. And then you go around the st- corner and then somebody says, you think it's over. It's not over. And they push you in and like, uh, and I said to the guy, I said, I hope it's not over because I'm kind of upset. Cause, oh, no. You know, <laughs> I said, yeah, I felt like, you know, and then, I don't know. I just. It's, it's just. Oh my god! <laughs> you get in an argument with some poor character who's just like, uh, "Well, you're an ass. Get out of here!" Like, like what I loved about when I did the horror camp out, which the scavenger hunt thing drove me nuts because it was too much. Atmospheric things were cool, and those actors were wonderful. Those actors sold it. Yeah, totally. So, anyhow, there you go. Man. I think next year I'm just going to spend the month of October going from haunted house to haunted house. I love haunted houses so much. Me too. I, I dig it. I dig it. Uh, dude, good times. I, I wish Justin was here with us. Congratulations again to him, uh, and 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 hopefully his flight arrives safely. <laughs> In the meantime, Brian, it's been patreon.com slash weird things. Well played, sir. Well played. All right, let me save this. Save, copy, as weird things. What are we calling this episode? Uh... Let me see. I think I had a title. Um, Blood Relatives. Blood blood Relatives. Very good. (laughs) Nicely done. Boy, that got got a little electric. I kind of wish we could get Penny up there. All right. Saving now. Uh, I'm going to stop the recording. Thanks to uh, everybody who's watching this video. Assuming you ever do see this video. Ooh. There you go. So I stopped the recording on that. We're still streaming, though. <laughs> Legal Gardener. <laughs> uh, yeah, dude. That that whole question, the the ethics of whether or not Virgin Galactics is, I mean, whether they're doing the right things or the wrong thing. I mean, they're 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 part of an eco. First of all, number one, every person involved as a free citizen of the world making their own choice um yeah i mean as long as they're following the law uh, you know i i'm like i uh, you know yeah do it do what you please and as long as you're following the law and you're disclosing to the people involved uh, and i guess uh, you know uh but i guess the other thing too is um uh yeah uh well i mean here's the weird part is a hundred years from now, they might look back and say that that you know, as as nutty and as you know, least safe, you know, last place in safety as they are right now, they could say that they contributed to the culture of the space race that's happening now. Similar to we look back at all of you know the deaths and and the the lost property that happened during the the space race. But at the end of the day, all of that contributed, even though it was not science based, it was patriotic, you know, chest thumping and and game theory of of, uh, propaganda that got us to the moon. At the end of the day, we got to the moon and all of that contributed to it. And I feel like even as go ahead, let me give you two arguments, though. At what point do we say, no, you're taking too many chances? You know what? You know, when we're if we're running a secret program like the Russians, where you're blowing up cosmonauts and not telling people. Because it's far more dangerous. At what point do you say, okay, because I think like we, 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 we I love this country because we pride people ambition and being able to step out there. At what point do we say, but you know what, you're not being as accountable as you could be. That's, that's my first question is that, is that there is, there's the ambitious path and then there's the point of which your, your ambition exceeds your knowledge and your arrogance is sort of your stepping on your own thing. Yeah, I mean, I guess again, you know, I it's it's not my place to say whether it's the best idea or even a good idea. The the the, the question is, is do they have the right to, and should they have the right to keep on doing? And the answer is like, you know, as many people want to run over a cliff, I think they're allowed to run over that cliff. I, I, you know? I, that's but that's not the question. I'm, again, we've yeah. established you and I both do whatever you want. If you're asking me, do I invest in it? Do I encourage? Oh this? no 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 yeah correct yeah no 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 I, I I think I think I think that's the assessment right is is it a good idea uh no or let me put it this way to be perfectly fair i would say it's not how i would run it it's not how i would spend my money to back it's not where i would invest in uh i think that's the truest statement i can make because outside of that it makes it sound like like i'm in a place to to decide for them and of course i'm not you know yeah and i think that's that's you know again like i said is they have the right to to do these things and and 
you know, my, my, you know, I, that's my, if you ask me like, well, what do I think? And it's like, well, you know, I think, you know, I, I think that what I've heard anecdotally has, it has me, you know, concerned, but I think that they have a right to respond and say, this is true or not the case. And, and bad stuff said about everybody, SpaceX, everything else. You heard people like, oh, SpaceX is to this, to that, to whatever. And, you know, you had, you had, you know, the, the orbital sciences thing is a big setback. Not happy to see that. But there were people who were like, well, they're doing a much more, you know, proven method to get to space than SpaceX. And then orbital science has to blow up a rocket on the pad because its trajectory is off. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, this stuff is hard. Yep. Agreed. Um, hey, man, I'm going to play a game called uh, uh, Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon uh, right now uh, just to fill some air uh, and because I can. Uh, I don't know if you want to hang around and watch. I have to. I have to run. Um, I got to go put together some writing stuff. I would love to see that. Um, and actually, I'm trying to pull up our patrons here to see how I'm going to send out the the weird list. Um, well, I believe you could do it as a free. Uh, you have the login for Patreon.com. Yeah, I'm in there thing. right now looking at the, so, the account. Yeah, it's stuff. it's a bit. It's a it's very much. You could tell that it's a young idea that that you know Patreon's trying to make everything as user friendly as they can. So it'll be a bit, a bit of a of a, um, a roller coaster to get there. But you, I'm sure you can figure out how to. Yeah, I figured out how to select, and now I can click here like send a message to them. So to what I'll do patrons, then is I'll yeah. send them the subscribe link and then proceed from there. So I'll do well, that in the next couple of days, but yeah, that'll be and, coming. And I don't even know that you need to. Well, I guess you 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 could send it out. I assume if everyone's a patron, they'd like to hear from us, right? I think. Uh, well, yeah, I'm just saying for the weird list itself because it's a certain level is where you get that at. Got it. Oh, that's right. That's right. I forgot all about that. Um, awesome. Cool. Well then, uh, hey, by the way, we got an email or Twitter. Uh, Matt Wardiker says, first time catching a Weird Things podcast. We'll be viewing a lot more. Sweet. So that's great. We uh, had some criticisms or some, not criticisms, but a lot of people didn't like the Toe Volcano. Oh. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. I, I really enjoyed doing that. Too. I mean, it, it like people wanting to throw up listening to it, which was the goal. So that was a mission accomplished. Yeah, I mean, that was it was all t- that was, it, was, it was our Halloween campfire ghost story. That's 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 what it was. Yep. Uh, awesome. Uh, okay. Cool. Well, here I'm going to go ahead and boot up this game, and I'm going to see if I can stay live on the stream while I transfer everything over. All right. Goodbye, uh, everybody. All right, take care, buddy. All right. So I guess what we'll do here. Let me just throw some random. Some rando music on. And let me see if I can start another without having to shut down the switching here. I'm going to do... Plus, we'll do a local... A local desktop presenter source. Uh, nope, I guess that's not working. Local presenter. Beautiful guys that... I'm Paul, so you want to join the band? All right, so here, we'll show this, and, and then I'll... And then oh, wait, here's what I do. Sorry, it's taking me just a moment, guys. I guess I should also start the freaking game in order to be able to show that off. If you guys haven't seen... Uh, uh, for those of you guys who missed my previous playthroughs of... of Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon, set in an alternate dystopian 1980s future, and uh, early on I was having some difficulty... Getting a uh, getting a handle on the overwhelming nature of the game, but at this point uh, we're now at a place where it feels like Far Cry 3, which I'm much more familiar with. So we should be able to play through some pretty good stuff fast. Uh, let me. Uh, everyone could stay here for, I mean, I'll certainly keep playing it here. I guess I'd have to stop and restart the stream to put us on Twitch, which maybe, maybe I should do. I'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to stop the stream and I'll start it again on Twitch. So prepare for a short outage.